Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, a self-taught farmer, physicist, and electrical engineer who conducts open source research in the fields of unified physics, soil science, human biology, neuroscience, and radiant energy power systems. No new ideas expressed in my videos can be patented. So in today's video, we're going to talk about radiant energy and how it can be perhaps captured in a power system. Um, so I want to make one thing really clear at the start of the video, that I'm not talking about anything that breaks the laws of conservation of energy. Um, you know, obviously in unified physics, we're not dealing with closed systems, um, and in regular physics we probably shouldn't be either, but we do. Um, and so although we can look at a power system and say, yeah, you know, voltage times current equals power, and that's always going to stay the same. And for the most part, that does seem to be true. But um, it's about what's outside that system and, and, you know, what can we use? So if we look at all the natural sources that we harvest power from, they're all radiant energy in some way. You know, we've got solar, which is uh, directly from light, which is, is a different kind of uh, conversion there than the usual. But still, um, we've got, you know, waterfall power, um, hydro, where we're using turbines, harvesting from, you know, this particular energy source, um, which of course, again, isn't a closed system. So it's not just the waterfall that we're harvesting power from. Uh, and as Sim Haramine explains this really well in his Unifying Physics course, but it's actually the whole fair weather circuit uh, that's evaporating that rain, you know, when it comes to the bottom of its course or goes into the sea, and then the water that fills back up the reservoir at the top of the waterfall. So there's always a larger system that we're looking at when we're looking at radiant energy. So I'm going to be talking about, uh, I guess, historical ways that this was generally captured and also some modern ways that it's been done. And then just start to talk a little bit about my own research into this topic. And this is supposed to be a video that really introduces the stuff that I'm going to be posting in the future on my research on this power system and this topic in general and how Nikola Tesla and others uh, used resonance and uh, radiant energy EMR to produce some kind of meaningful power, how we can potentially use our modern knowledge to use this to even further extents in the future. So um, I guess another thing is, is that Considering that we do have billions of watts of radiant energy coming from the sun and other cosmic forces, so we can see from the outside, from this macrocosm, macrocosm of the system, we can induct radiant power, um, which I'll explain a little bit later, but it's out there, you know? Um, and Nassim Haramein's theory, and, and certainly others, is that, you know, what we would generally call this zero point, that's used a lot in energy circles, um, and and to criticize people who use that. Um, but it's true, there is a, a zero point which we can never actually reach um, because if we look at unified physics, uh, we have a dielectric portal at the center of every magnetic field which makes up everything on all levels, you know? So from the Planck to the proton, going up to, uh, you know, the geometry of, of planets and orbits and galaxies and potentially the universe. So um, the, if you want to read more about that, you can check out uh, the Resonance Science Academy, uh, Nassim Haramein's free open source course on unified physics. It's incredibly detailed, explains that really well. But according to this theory, we've also got the microcosm. We can also go in. Um, so infinitely out, infinitely in. So when we look at the magnetic field, we've got this dielectric portal. And if we see this picture of, I'll put it on the screen, of the ferrocell, cell, um, this is again, credit Ken Wheeler uh, and the inventor Tim Vercelli, I think his name is, uh, from ferrocell cell US. Uh, this is the actual magnetic field of a magnet. And this, and it's just because a magnet is a really strong magnetic field that we can um, use this ferromagnetic nanofluid uh, to show this representation with some LED lights here. But Ken Wheeler's got a lot of stuff on this if you're interested. But we can see this dielectric portal at the center that Nassim calls the black hole and 
conventional physicists call the black hole as well, but they don't usually apply it to this scale, I guess. Um, but this isn't just the magnetic field of a magnet. This is the same geometry of the, the magnetic field of everything, which we can't verifiably, uh, you know, prove visually at the moment, as far as I'm aware. But um, certainly if you look at Haramein's research, there is a ton of, of genuine verified facts there about the fact that everything is made up in in this way. Um, so at the center of the magnetic field, we've got these two opposing vortexes uh, that meet at this plane of inertia, um, which is our dielectric black hole or our just black hole or dielectric portal. Um, and seemingly we can never actually find the center of this because it will just keep going in. You know, it depends on what frame of reference we're looking at it with, but th this is that infinite portal that connects all things via what Nassim Haramein calls wormholes, um, you know, from this zero point. So this relates to radiant energy a lot, because if we consider that we can harvest energy from the macrocosm, from, you know, what's larger than us, then potentially we can harvest energy from the microcosm, what's smaller than us, you know, um, going into a smaller frame of reference, bring that energy into our dimension. Um, and that sounds pretty crazy, but Haramin's work shows that the mass of the proton, for example, or the mass of the Planck, um, seems to be, it contains just as much matter, um, you know, just as much mass and just as much empty space as the whole universe itself. And even conventional quantum physics is showing that. And that's where quantum physics has some use, because we can view things from this different particle frame of reference where we can say, you know, at least if they're valid and they follow this phi ratio, which is always used, um, we can go, you know, this Planck is kind of the same as this atom, you know, and this atom is kind of the same as this planet, but we've just, it depends on what scale we're looking at it. So I guess like one example of how we're already harvesting energy from this kind of small scale source, the microcosm source, is nuclear energy, and that obviously doesn't exactly work how I'm saying. Um, I've got a bit of a theory about that, that anyway, we're doing it on a very small scale where we're somehow, uh, I mean, of course they're saying, you know, it's the reaction of these two very unstable elements. And, you know, that's kind of right in some way, but I believe there's a little more to it and a little more we could add there about how the fields are interacting and how we're getting that effect. And I'll probably talk a little bit about that in the future. So I'm just gonna give a few historical examples uh, of radiant energy collection and experimentation uh, that other kind of famous scientists did. And then it'll give you a little bit of context on what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a radiant energy power system. So I guess the first and the most famous is Nikola Tesla. Um, and of course, People say he got a little eccentric in his later work, um, although they certainly loved his earlier work, which is the foundations of our AC power system and long range power transmission and a number of other things, um, including most of the electrical components, the origin, the, the initial kind of components that we use in electrical engineering today. But yeah, he got a little eccentric, but only because his later research wasn't acknowledged and he did get shut down by JP Morgan and uh, yeah, things didn't really work out very well for him and he was moving really too fast for the establishment um, where everything that they were starting to invest money in, like for example, copper lines, you know, long range power transmission, Tesla's brilliant AC system that they loved so much. You know, when he was talking about just getting rid of all the power lines in the world and wirelessly transmitting power and stuff like this, uh, they weren't so keen on it at the time. I think maybe people are going to be a little more open-minded now um, because we are at that stage where we're, we need to do something. We kind of need to advance. They've abused the world for a, a little long enough, um, you know, just in terms of how much we're mining and, and how much infrastructure we've had to put in that we don't necessarily need. Um, so I think it's kind of time to talk about this stuff. Um, but if we look at what Nikola Tesla was doing. So we had these two patents here, um, methods for harvesting radiant energy. Uh, so the method on building an experimental apparatus and then also the, uh, the method of actually testing it and harvesting energy through it. 
uh, and, and the circuitry required to, to harvest energy uh, through the little collector he's got here. So that's probably the best example and that's inspired a lot of people on this path, and including myself to some extent. Um, but really what he's doing here is it's his original kind of very similar to a Tesla coil circuit. He's got a, a tank here. He's got a switch that switches the circuit from what Proteus Steinmetz calls infinite resistance to, um, uh, to no resistance or so zero resistance very, very fast. Um, and it wasn't very fast in his day, but I'm going to do another whole video on switches and how that affects the circuit and my knowledge on that at the moment. But uh, yeah, this is the original kind of radiant energy collector circuit that's inspired many. And um, he used this aerial here to, um, I guess you harvest the cosmic rays as he called them. Um, and of course, Tesla did believe in a field of ether and he was, you know, the, the claim discoverer of the rotating magnetic field, which is indeed there. So, um, yeah, we should take him pretty seriously on this, I think. And, and certainly my replications of this patent and his experiments so far have just showed the same results or very similar results. Um, so this is a really, really interesting one. I'll probably go into it in more detail in the future, but it just gives you a little background on what it was here he was doing. He was trying to harvest cosmic rays. Um, it worked with sunlight, but it, it worked at night as well, he said. Um, and there's been a bunch of other people who've tried this kind of stuff. It's what I'm talking about here with the unified physics stuff. So another couple of examples are um, Benjamin Franklin's kite experiment. So we all learned this one in school, you know, where he put a kite up um, with a wire into the air um, and it would attract lightning and he would be able to do all sorts of things on the ground, like run the little uh, devices they had for testing in the day. Um, and stuff like that. And so he was really experimenting with, you know, just how lightning affected things. But he was, yeah, he was harvesting a form of radiant energy um, by creating a bit of a differential between where he was harvesting the energy on the earth and higher up in the atmosphere during a lightning storm. So a lot of interesting stuff on that. And you can obviously check out his experiments. They're widely available, although they don't explain them that well sometimes. Um, I haven't checked out if you can source his original work, but it might be worth looking into. Um, another interesting one to read on it is there's an old book called Electrical Experiments, illustrating the theory, practice and application of the science of free or frictional electricity by George Francis. Um, and I can't remember where I found that online. Uh, I think another YouTuber recommended it, but I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. But it's got a ton of, of different, really old experiments of him, you know, chasing feathers around a room that are, have become charged and finding out that cats are very, very charged and, and all sorts of really, really interesting stuff. So it deals with a little bit of uh, radiant energy stuff. Of course, there was Wilhelm Reich as well, um, which he was highly suppressed, but he seemingly made a motor that has very kind of similar properties to what Tesla was talking about and what future research has kind of shown using these layers of, um, of different properties of materials uh, to generate energy. And he supposedly in front of a bunch of other scientists, I think about 12, and some of them have reported this personally, um, connected it to some kind of pulse motor and created energy that way. But in all of these, um, or the couple that I've mentioned and others, um, from later and before that, they're pretty much always trying to find some method of harvesting a low voltage, low current, um, kind of initiating power source. Uh, and then they're designing a circuit that is tuned both with a tank capacitor and the circuit itself. Um, they're usually using coils, Reich wasn't, but Tesla certainly was to play around with the voltage and the current um, and then they're definitely using a switching mechanism to be able to um, quickly bring about and then um, collapse those magnetic fields into radiant energy, into EMR that can be captured in the circuit in certain ways. And that goes off Steinmetz's theory and of course Tesla's before him, but Steinmetz puts it really well. You know, if, um, if we could theoretically switch a circuit between infinite resistance and zero resistance really quickly, 
then theoretically we would have uh, an over unity energy. So it's kind of going off those ideas. So I've also got some modern examples um, of harvesting radiant energy. The first is uh, these crystal cells. Um, there's a lot of experimentation on YouTube. I'll link to a channel in the description. Uh, but, you know, there's essentially, you know, crystals harvest this piezoelectric energy or they they charge and they pulse out their energy at a certain rate. And this appears, I mean, the crystal cell guys don't talk about this a lot from what I understand, but this appears to be how the crystal is tuned. There's certainly a lot of other research on this and a lot of our, um, you know, current semiconductors and how we tune circuits is, is based on this understanding of how to tune semiconductors. So... Crystals can be tuned to a certain resonant frequency, a certain capacitance, um, and then they can indeed seem to harvest many different forms of radiant energy as well. Um, so they're interesting to look into and they form a little bit of context for this. Um, there's also a few guys playing around with atmospheric motors um, and other forms of kind of atmospheric electricity, just the general YouTube scientific experimenters. Um, so Layers of Saber on YouTube has done a ton of stuff on this. Um, you can see his Atmo motor, which he's doing something very similar to Benjamin Franklin's kite experiment there. Just, uh, yeah, sending a wire high up into the sky and powering a, yeah, a very low friction motor with it. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Also, I think the Plasma Channel does something on this, or maybe Nighthawk and Light. Um, I'll link to that down in the description when I find it as well. Um, another modern guy who's done a bit of in stuff on this and doesn't focus on it too much is uh, Robert Murray Smith, who he's really awesome. He's an English inventor, uh, well worth subscribing to his channel. Um, but he's done some stuff with what he calls the graph tenor. Um, and he's experimented. He's written the book on graphene, literally, um, which is really excellent. Um, and his research has helped me along with a lot of different ideas and, you know, looking more into this research. Um, so he's got some videos on his graph tenor where he harvests some pretty kind of shocking energy uh, from something very small, very simple, using pretty much the same method as uh, Tesla's radiant power circuit, missing a few pieces there. Um, another one is PMMG4 Hybrid, um, and unfortunately he's passed away, but his YouTube channel is still up there. Uh, I can't remember his name, I'm afraid it doesn't get mentioned a lot, but... Um, Quantum Magnetics, uh, I think was his business name, and he was selling what was called, I think, the Q3 generator and his carbon silicon um, power cells, which I'll, I'll show here. Uh, and yeah, he was seemingly combining uh, graphite, and he made his own graphite alloy and his own some kind of magnetic alloy or something like this. Uh, and put a semi-solid electrolyte between them. And then he's built this whole motor that is powered off a battery, but then the battery receives more charge than it started with um, through him powering his coils through a supercapacitor bank and the cells. So that's really, really interesting research. He did die of a certain form of cancer, and I think... Maybe this is a good warning for us to um, be careful when we're playing around with these things because I'm not entirely, he doesn't talk about tuning um, his AC thing, you know, things that are going on in his invention, his motor at all. So uh, that's, you know, maybe concerning about the radiant energy EMR uh, that's just floating out in the atmosphere um, around him. You know, ju just a theory. I don't want to make theories about someone's death, but I think it is a warning to us to maybe just experiment carefully with this stuff because some people do seem to get cancer. Um, and there seems to be a lot of evidence that before uh, a circuit is tuned, it's reasonably dangerous. After it's tuned, there's not so much EMR loss. So uh, just be careful there. But check out his work. It's really fantastic. Um, anyway, it gave me a lot of different ideas on building my collector cells. And other things, uh, another really good one to check out is Evo, uh, Master Evo on YouTube. He has been working on a radiant half-bridge circuit for a long time now, a few years at least. Um, and he's open-sourced all of his stuff. I'm actually 
using his um, high voltage MOSFET uh, switching PCB, which I've just ordered and, and received uh, to make what I believe is currently the fastest high voltage switch known to man, at least on the consumer market currently. Uh, so his work is really, really cool. He's been experimenting with uh, Tesla Bifila pancake coils. Um, I'm experimenting with rodent coils, so a little bit different but they share a lot of the same properties about where we're trying to uh, concentrate our dielectric energy. So I think my research is very similar to his in a lot of ways. So you'll probably enjoy his if you enjoy mine. Um, so as far as my own experiments go, I started off with making these, this is a very old one, uh, radiant energy collectors. Um, so, yeah, it started off with me just following some simple methods of making up uh, different kind of like carbon inks and paints uh, and trying out these paper cells, you know, that had essentially three components, um, a, a carbon or a graphite layer and a semicon semiconductor, a semi-solid semiconductor usually in between and then a metal layer, variously used steel and copper and aluminium and all sorts of different things. So yeah, th this cell, um, this is an asymmetrical cell and I'm gonna be experimenting more with symmetrical cells in the future now that I understand natural resonance a little more and what I'm really trying to achieve, what, the, what is the property behind radiant energy um, rather than what is radiant energy. So my latest collector cell experiments focused on using uh, graphene oxide and bismuth in combination in the semiconductor layer um, to produce the most current that I could from the cell. Again, I'm going to be looking more into using them as kind of resonant antennas in the future and so looking more into symmetrical cells, but still really interesting and I'm going to do another whole video just going through how to make simple semi-solid electrolytes, um, exploring what effects I've got from the collectors and also what problems I'm still encountering um, and asking the community for feedback if we can together work out uh, yeah, some of the more simple engineering solutions to making these cells uh, better and doing what we want here. So I'm also starting to play around, or I have been playing around with for a little while now, uh, the circuitry uh, for a resonant tuned um, tank or LC circuit uh, to capture and utilize the energy from the collectors in the way that I want to. So this is again a lot based on Nikola Tesla's radiant energy patent and also now a lot based on Evo's work uh, which again you can find on YouTube, link in the description. So. I'm going to be yeah, using those kind of different configurations on the collectors, um, trying out these aerial configurations, using rodent coils as my coils and exploring those effects. So all of that's going to be tied in um, and doing similar things like Evo with the MOSFET switching circuit, etc. So you, yeah, you'll see all of that in future videos. So I mean, is this just stealing power from the grid or other you know, radio towers or something, uh, you know, is it harvesting electro smog? I mean, it, it's definitely not stealing power from the grid. Uh, these things are working through resonance, you know, unless we're really up close to the grid, we're not going to get induction. So again, if you put your radiant energy collector up near a power line and you see, you can actually see this, you know, if you put an extension lead near, um, something built in this fashion, you know, in this kind of antenna fashion that contains the right materials, it will indeed induct energy from that source. So there's no doubt about that, but you do need to be close to something. You know, if you bring coils apart, if you bring the collector away from the power source, it doesn't need to be very far away and that induction will break. So unless you're up close to a power line, no, you're not stealing energy. Um, if you do have your collectors or your circuitry tuned to 50 or 60 hertz or another frequency that's being used um, around you, like a radio tower or something, you could be certainly tuning into that. But as far as I'm aware, you know, you're not creating a load on that tower through that, you know, th this form of transmission. So 
correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I'm aware, even if we are harvesting electro smog, um, you know, in the sense of like uh, a lot of our circuitry isn't tuned, even if we look at how we use transformers, etc., you know, you can measure up close. So there is a, um, a higher level of EMR radiating from a transformer. And, and generally speaking, that's just because those coils aren't actually tuned to resonance. They're just tuned to do what the circuit wants to do. So to drop down or to raise the voltage to a certain level to power a device. Um, so not only transformers, but so many things like this are creating, uh, you know, what we're calling electro smog, um, this kind of radiant energy pollution. And if we are harvesting that, fine, you, that, that's good, actually, you know, there's no problem with that. So like I say, there's a million other sources of radiant energy, like all, you know, the energy of the sun, of the heat, uh, of the radiant cosmic rays, as Tesla calls them, um, from the planets, which isn't woo woo, you know, this is, this is there, it's measurable. We can, um, get energy from these things at night. So yeah, if it is stealing energy, it's not stealing energy that we want in our atmosphere. And otherwise it's not stealing any meaningful power from any source in any way that I can kind of correlate to, to physics or, um, radio frequency engineering. So yeah, let me know if you have a different opinion that is, you know, based on science and, and reason, um, and I'm certainly willing to consider it. But otherwise, I believe we are harvesting forms of radiant energy uh, that are certainly there to be harvested. And if we look at unified physics, there's the potential of harvesting energy from the vacuum, as Nassim says, from the microcosm. There's obviously the potential that we've already talked about of harvesting it from the macrocosm, um, from the movement of the planets and um, yeah, everything up in orbit there that has some kind of magnetic influence or cosmic ray influence on Earth in some way. So anyway, this is just a quick introductory video um, to radiant energy. I'm going to look far more into my experiments in these videos much more deeply and individually in the future. So if you're interested in that, follow along. Um, I guess one more thing here from Nikola Tesla. Um, he certainly seemed to suggest that the keys to his work were understanding what he called rotating magnetic fields and tuning different parts of the circuit to resonance. So again, just more support from his work that these are the things he was talking about. And I mean, using this logic, we could hypothesize that the antenna or collector that he uses in his radiant energy patents is actually receiving and providing energy based on resonance alone, regardless of the external source that it becomes sympathetic with. So again, just a hypothesis here, but he talks so much about these things and there's multiple ways to consider something, right? If we consider the different forms of physics, you know, we've got quantum physics, which is quantizing these particle designations um, on different frames of references that all appear to follow the same ratios, the same phi ratio pattern. Um, but then we can also understand that potentially we are dealing with a unified field here. So these particle designations are what? They're kind of secondary, actually. Um, if we're dealing with a unified field and we're dealing with the conjugate modalities of a magnetic and a dielectric field, then this is on a different level to that because that's happening on all different levels. So although we can say that we're harvesting EMR or, you know, we're harvesting energy from this power line or, you know, this um, radio source, if we look at it on a different level, potentially we are removing time and space as an obstacle, removing the difference between two objects, for example, two tuned coils or a collector and the atmosphere or a earth collector differential and, and the atmosphere around it to harvest energy through resonance. So that's just thinking about a waterfall in terms of, you know, are we harvesting kinetic force or according to unified physics, perhaps we're actually harvesting the potential difference between the top of that waterfall, the bottom of that waterfall, and the medium that's flowing through it um, to create resistance with the air. So things to consider, that we can view things on all different levels, and this is maybe how we need to consider radiant energy systems um, to understand what's happening 
in the full light um, as it works with field theory rather than just particle theory and talking about electrons. I'm certainly going to talk about unified physics more in the future and Ken Wheeler's field definitions and definitions of magnetism and the dielectric field, Charles Proteus Stein Metz uh, and my practical work. So yeah, let me, let me know what you think. If this was really simple, if this was a little too complicated, you want the basics or you just want to delve in to see what I'm doing, um, love to hear your feedback or similar work that you may have been performing. Let me know in the comments and all of the links to the stuff I've been talking about in the description. Thanks for watching.